Welcome to the Midnight Mirage Classics. This tape will be a graduation ceremony for anyone in attendance. So I want you to just give yourself a pat on the back. Give yourself a round of applause. You've been staying down to come up. You rose to the occasion when the trials and tribulations confronted you. And you stood on all ten. And because of that, now you're going to ascend to another level. So whether it's some business you've been working on, maybe you've been trying to get a new job, maybe you've been trying to get a new car, something that you've been working on either the last few weeks, last few months, maybe even last few years, maybe even last few decades. But someone out there listening to this right now just achieved something. And it could be big or it could be small. But nevertheless, we all want to be in a position of graduation right now and look to ascend some part of ourselves and to expand our own life. So we're in expansion season right now. We're into extending and expanding right now. All right. And that's the ultimate goal in this tape. That's the inspiration in this tape. That's my intention in this tape. For all of us to graduate in one way or another in some area of our lives. The introduction to this tape, I want to talk about how the good decisions and the good choices you make in the future will make you seem godly or divine. The good decisions, the good choices that you make today will one day make you seem divine or godly. A lot of the times... When people have good things happen in their lives, others perceive it as a quote unquote blessing, some. And other people may just perceive it as something good that happened for that person. But a lot of the times we don't see the behind the scenes and the intricate details and just the everyday daily operations of a person's grind. So when things come into manifestation or fruition. Um. Sometimes it can be startling, especially if you didn't know exactly um, the road that person took to get there. And generally and casually, you have some people make these kind of comments and statements like, oh, this person is blessed. Oh, this person has favor, um, and, you know, and all these type of phrases, let's say. OK, but the truth of the matter is, is that because that person had insight, intuition and obedience, these are very, very important three factors I just just or attributes rather I just named spiritual insight, intuition, obedience. I'm going to repeat them one more time because anybody that wants to be successful in anything in life, I don't care what it is you're doing or what you're trying to do. You're going to need these three factors in order to reach the pinnacle or the zenith of, of, of whatever it is you're trying. Intuition, spiritual insight and obedience. All right. In prior takes, I've talked about how the higher power, the source of all knowledge and wisdom, the one who can help you get to your true destination and path, the one who put a spirit and soul and the energy within you, already has certain seeds put within you. And these seeds are within your body. And you need to grow them, cultivate them, figure out what they are within you, and become what you're destined to be and Share that with creation as a whole, okay? So if you go on that natural path of figuring out your seed within yourself and becoming what it is you're um, predestined to be, you will contribute to society. And that road that you're on, you're going to have to have a lot of guidance and instruction to help the manifestation come about the way it's supposed to in the land of the living here. And a lot of that does come from the higher power. Some of us may call it God, whatever you want to call it. I've, I've even heard a lot of people call it the universe. You know, we give it these vague terms, but nevertheless, we're talking about the source, the true source, the true one source. Now, we may give it different terms, but we're talking about the true one source. That is the source of all knowledge and wisdom, guidance and understanding and light as well. So anybody that becomes successful in life, there was some type of guidance that person received from within. And it was either from something malefic and dangerous spiritually 
or it was from the true source itself. And it led that person, you know, to the destination that they were supposed to, you know, eventually arrive to. All right. So when you have these revelations in your life, you know, you 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 praying within yourself. You have goals, you know, you have skills and talent and you want to grow up and be something one day. You working on something you want to become what that is. You will receive a lot of signals, messages, impulses, sensation and a variety of other everyday life experiences that will be giving you more and more clues, more and more information that's getting you closer and closer to your destination. All right. And these are being sent to you from the higher power. OK, you'll even have certain. Um, I guess you could say spiritual forces that you can't even see assisting you in certain ways. All right. For example, in the Bible, they call them angels. But nevertheless, you're going to be guided and, and assisted and helped if you just, for one, have the intuition, the spiritual insight, but most importantly, the obedience to follow that original revelation. And even when times get tough, even when it feels like it's not going to happen, even when you feel like you get lost, you still got to have that strength or that word that we call faith to keep on pressing through. Because the word faith is basically just it's a certain type of energy. That will create inspiration from within that will allow you to stay on a journey, even though you don't have all the full physical evidence. That the original revelation may have shown you because the higher power, when things are revealed to you, you know, based on what you want to really be in life and the higher power shows you how this can happen. If you just follow it this particular way, it's going to take a time to happen. And, you know, people can get discouraged along that road but you have that faith. It's really just a deep inner confidence to know that, no, this is going to happen. I may be in a tough time now or, you know, whatever the situation may be, but no, this is going to happen. So therefore, I'm going to keep pressing through, even though things right now look kind of shaky and funny. So we don't want to get confused on, you know, what that term faith is. The high power, you know, needs you to have faith in the revelation that was revealed to you. And a lot of this faith you have to have is faith in yourself as well. Because whatever God is and whatever God is doing, you know, he's doing that. OK, and our faith and our prayer, the high power doesn't need that. It doesn't sustain itself off of that. It's not like the other pagan gods that need you to pray to it and worship it for it to live like a damn vampire sucking up off of your energy. It, no, the, the true higher power, the true source. I'm sure it can live and do its thing without anybody even knowing or paying it any attention. So this faith really is to help us. Stay on the right path, okay? Because a lot of times we can self-sabotage, you know? We can chop off our own foot on the way to the destination, okay? So understand that one day, you know, the choices you make, whether they're favorable or unfavorable for yourself, you're going to see the results of them. And just even myself in the last two weeks, I've seen the immaculate results of good choices that were made a very, very long time ago by myself people and other people in my life and i've also seen the poor sorrowful embarrassing results of people making poor choices years ago and now they're in the stew of destruction and having to live with the consequences of decisions they made a long time ago and it's very very you know a shame because a lot of people have aspirations when they get older in life and they learn about business, et cetera, and they want to do these things. But when you've made poor choices already and let's say impregnated the wrong woman, now you got several kids from the wrong woman. You may be in a certain type of relationship that you don't need to be in. So, of course, you can't just get up and, you know, get on a plane and make moves. And you, you can't do that like that. You know, you got to check in with the wife, you know, and then maybe you even got. You know, a certain type of employment that you're not really into, but you got to do it just to keep the lights on because you got this whole family supposed to, you, you got to support. But had you known years ago that if you would have just been patient and followed the higher powers, you know, revelation that showed you maybe that you should stay single. Maybe you should just, you know, keep on grinding it out with your job or whatever it was you was doing. Maybe you was in college or it was something you was doing. Maybe you should have just did that and don't worry about them nights when you alone. 
Don't worry about them nights on Instagram where everybody looked like they turning up. But you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't ignore that. You couldn't just stick to the vision. And you slipped up and you made a poor choice. And now here you are at a certain age and you disgruntled and dissatisfied with your life. But the truth of the matter is, is that you put yourself in this position. It wasn't the shaitan that did it. All that force can do is influence you. But you're going to still make that choice on, you know, where you want to go at the end of the day, the left or the right. So understand that the future you is either going to be very, very proud of the old you or the future you is going to be very, very pissed off at the old you. So you limit the two choices you got. Either the future you is going to be very, very proud of you or the future you is going to be very, very disappointed in you. So don't set up the future you. You know, for a um, bad or poor circumstance, you know, very, very important. So what I want to do, you know, briefly. Um, is we want to read in Mark chapter two, verse 22. Where the prophet Jesus made this statement, he said, and no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. All right. So that's that's, you know, essentially where I got that um that thought from, you know, the graduation, graduation of the mentality, graduation of our behavior, graduation of certain people we were associating with, you know, a graduation of something in our lives. Um, that's pouring the new wine into new wine skins. So maybe. You know, as we contemplate, we, we, we may analyze ourselves and see certain poor decisions we made. We clean these behaviors up or this thought process or this certain emotional pattern that we had. We delete it, get rid of it. All right. So we can get better results in our life. So now we've poured out that old wine. All right. And now there's a fresh new wine, fresh new knowledge. When you have the truth, that, that, that represents that new wine. OK. When you have that divine light from within. Because intuition and spiritual insight in spiritual text, we call that light. So, you know, how you may read about the light of God or when Moses saw the burning bush or when Moses came down from the mountaintop, his face was glowing. He, he was he was radiating a strong, bright light. That strong, bright light in, in Islam is called an nur. OK, the an nur. And this is what gives you intuition and insight. All right. So you have mechanical knowledge, which is information you can learn by reading books and studying these books. And by repetition, you will get a grasp of this particular type of knowledge, whether it may be mathematics or any other branch of learning that you may choose to engage in. If you engage, if you do it in a repetitious fashion, eventually you will learn it. So most of these, you know. Uh, practices out here, whether it's being a doctor, an accountant, no matter what it is, if you study that science or that particular branch of learning and you do it enough and you're consistent at it enough, then you're going to learn it and you're going to know how to do it and perform it. So that's mechanical knowledge. But there's another type of knowledge that cannot be gained necessarily from reading books. All right. It's more of a what's the word I want to use? Um, it's more of a macro form of knowledge. So when you learn, you know, what spiritual knowledge is going to teach you about a variety of things in one package. OK, so you'll be able to tie everything together. All those nuanced details, uh, the intricate details, the spiritual insight, you know, what they call intuition. It'll give you those, you know. Um, excuse me, sorry about that. It'll give you um, that extra insight you need, rather. Excuse me, the extra insight. So, but um, but basically, you know, so if you're going into a new part of your life with a new mentality, if it was an old behavior, like let's say you used to go whenever you got off work, and let's say you're trying to get in shape now, um, you're trying to get in shape. And you're trying to engage in better activity. Maybe you want to start reading more and work on your business. And let's say when you used to get off work, 
you may go and, you know, go by the uh, corner store real quick, grab a beer or something. And then after that, you'll pull up on the block, you know, because the apartments may be right there where you used to hang out at with, with, with some of the guys. And when you did that, of course, that contributed to, you know, you gaining more weight because you're drinking more. A lot of time is being wasted because the people on the block, they're not trying to do nothing. They're just sitting there talking and, you know, kind of goofing off. So really that time, that's when you could be working out, not drinking, reading and working on the business. So if you've gotten to a point where you've decided, all right, I'm ready to graduate in that, that part of my life. and You've made that decision. Then the next step is, is you have to actually implement the behavior. And that can be hard, you know, because when you get off work, you may have that feeling of, you know, wanting to get the beer. You may have that feeling of wanting to go and hang out on the block. You see, you know, all the guys over there with the women or whatever. But nevertheless, you must um, screen and reject, you know, the temptation to go and do that. All right. Um, so you got to, you have to know yourself and you have to know what it is you probably need to move past because it may be another person out there that when they get off work, going and getting a beer and hanging out on the block, that may actually be the path they supposed to take to get to their success. So what's not good for you? may be good for someone else and what's good for someone else may not be good for you so you have to know yourself and know you know what is it you know that i'm supposed to be doing and don't be worried about what somebody else got on a plate don't be worried about you know how this person can do this and things still work out but then when i do it it don't work out yeah because they got a whole nother configuration to their life they got a whole other um, set up dynamic and reason for why things are the way they are and you're not the higher power so you don't really know why that may be set up in a life like that so we should always be paying attention to what we doing and not you know be caught up and consumed with the light that other have others have and the results from it because then when you start paying attention to other people too much that's going to turn into the jealousy you know so you want to watch out for that um Another thing I want to talk about is just, you know, real briefly, the esoteric symbolism of the jaw and the wicked ones in the modern age who are one eyed. So think about how a lot of these movies, you'll see somebody with one eye. They may be like the pirate with one eye or it'll be the cyclops with one eye, etc. Right. Ultimately, what that one eye symbolizes is the lack of spiritual insight intuition and obedience i'm gonna repeat one more time when you see somebody one-eyed that's an esoteric symbol for someone lacking intuition spiritual insight and obedience and ultimately that divine light that leads you on that path so that that's somebody that lacks that all right so when you're reading the bible or different books and it talks about somebody being blind and it, you know and because they're blind they may they may lack judgment like when you read about Isaac and how in his elder years he was blind. And because he was blind, it altered his judgment. And, you know, he was about to try to follow the tradition and give Esau the blessing. Whereas even though Esau was the elder son, he was very, very carnal in his ways. And he was one eyed. He had no spiritual insight. He had no intuition. So that's when, of course, you know. Jacob's mother came up with a plan to make sure Jacob gets the blessing, etc. All right. So we don't want to be one eyed people either. We want to have spiritual insight. All right. So always take that time. So, you know, just do a lot of self analysis, being self accountable, being self aware. All right. Doing that homework, you know, that introspective evaluation. You know, what is it that I need to work on? You know, let's say if you had a conversation with somebody and maybe you, you said something the wrong way, you know, man, did I say that the wrong way or, you know, I didn't, you know, did I offend them? Because it may have been a situation where you offended somebody. Maybe you didn't mean to, but it could have came off a certain way. So in other words, we always want to just be evaluating ourselves to make sure that we're on point. All right. Um, that's very, very important. Very, very important. Um. So I really want to get ready to wrap it up with this. Um, as I said, man, like the, the choices you make in the future, they're going to make you seem very, very godly. And it's going to make it seem like you got some type of divine favor or mercy. 
But what the people don't realize is, is that it's not that God is showing you any type of favoritism. It's that you were obedient to a revelation that was given. Because you were obedient and you stayed on the path, your spiritual insight, your, your intuition, it grew more and more. It expanded and extended more and more and more. And like Moses was radiating when he came down the mountaintop, that's how you look. When people get around you, they can sense your light. They can feel it. So people so awestruck by, you know, the new success you may have from you staying on that path and then finally reaching a goal, goal that it'll be so impactful that people will literally think you got some type of a favor or, you know, that, that quote unquote God did something for you that he ain't doing for other people. Whereas none of that is true. See, when you see somebody successful in life, and they have the they have the lifestyle that they want, the maybe the type of relationship and just overall life that they want. Them people are, are being obedient to either one or two forces, either the Luciferian force of creation, or the original source, which is coming from the actual creator itself, or the higher power, God, whatever you want to call it. You being obedient to one of those two, if you see somebody that's very 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 happy with their lives. If you see some, you know, people that's very, very happy, happy about their life, they being they being obedient to one of those two forces. OK. So what side of the field are you on? What are you being obedient to? Are you being obedient to your lower self? Are you being obedient to a part of you that. You get gratification from. But it's a fleeting type of gratification. It's nothing that's lasting. And it's nothing relevant and it's nothing constructive either. So you're, you're engaging in something that you really could do without. It's not adding to you and it is subtracting from you. Going on the block and drinking the beers. If that's not what you're supposed to be doing, then you doing that will subtract from you. And it most certainly won't add to you. All right. So we want to think about that, you know, we want to and we want to self contemplate because, you know, this whole life thing, man. You want to be moving forward. And, you know, even just recently, a lot of the rappers, you know, and. You know, they being killed and stuff like that. Um, and there's just a lot of things going on in the world. So you want to be on the right path and be on you know, your road and in, in, in on your particular path. Um, because you're gonna be so busy taking care of business that a lot of this negativity going in the going on in the world, you're gonna stay away from it. You know, some of it you may know about, some of it you may not, but it's not gonna have that negative effect on you. All right. That's why you gotta be purpose driven. You know, when you leave this when you leave your home, you leave your apartment in the morning, wherever it is you're staying, you know, it, it just shouldn't be no lollygagging. You know, you got to know where you're going, what you're going to do when you get there. Maybe how long you're going to stay. Have an idea of who may be in that area, even if it's a store, you know, but. You just want to be thinking out here, man, and uh, and be sharp. You know, if you got loved ones, you you got to make sure that they up. They up the point with up the part with what's going on out here, you know, uh, what what the temperature is like of people. Cause it's a lot of it's a lot of people that have good hearts and good intent and but it, you know it's still things that they may not be aware of you know to say the to say the least so it's so any kind of information you have from the light that you have uh you may want to share that with people that's around you because yeah it's um it's definitely going down out here and, you know, but I'm also say this too, man, in life, usually when somebody it's like the seesaw in the playground, you know, when somebody's going down, somebody else shit going up, you know, because, you know, it's like I was telling you, man, in just the last two weeks only, like I've been literally see certain people seesaw go all the way up. And literally simultaneously as these people going up, I'm seeing other people I know seesaw go all the way down. It's some of the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. Like in such a short period like that. 
certain information I'm hearing about people. Literally, it's like people either seesawing all the way up or they shit seesawing down. And that's how it is, you know, in life. Um, even though we all doing our own thing, but on the seesaw, man, you on one or two sides. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when the Luciferian, satanic type people of life, when their thing is going good for them, shit for the real niggas and the women, stuff get kind of tough. But as soon as things lighten up, the people that's real, the success start coming, the happiness start coming, and they start rising in life, literally at that same time, the Luciferian Satanists, that's when you see them getting literally, you know, eliminated. And they just start dropping left and right. And shit just start going south for them. So, you know, you just got to always be, you know, looking at the food that's on your plate, man. And whether something going good for somebody else, you salute them. And when something going bad for some, for, for somebody, you know, if you give, I guess, like some kind of good advice to maybe help them get out of it, you do that. But if it's something bad and you don't even need to be around it, I say you just stay all the way out the way. You don't give no good advice to it. You don't be around it. You don't have no pity for it. And you don't even have no negativity for it. You don't even look at it like, I'm happy to see this person in a down position. It could have been somebody that fucked you over. Somebody that was talking reckless about you, putting lies out about your name. You know what I'm saying? Trying to make up flugazy shit about you. But at the end of the day, if you going up in life and you see them going down, you know, shit, just keep on going up. You know, really fuck them. You know, let them deal with whatever it is they had been dealing with that whole time anyway. Because if you was focused on your work every day in and out, you didn't even know what they had going on. And that's another thing, too. A lot of people that's hating on y'all and jealousy, y'all, you know, you don't even know what the hell them folks got going on because you too busy putting in work. So just keep on putting in work. But but do understand, though, you know, it's, it's people that don't want to see you win and they're not going to want to see your archetype win either. So we talking about people that you know and people that you don't know. So just be aware of that as well. But. In conclusion, man, the main thing is, is um, as long as you tapped into the source from within, you know, you receiving that divine knowledge, you know, through your soul and spirit, your soul and spirit is connected to the source it came from. It's getting a pure truth with no cut on it. And you following that you got you got faith in that revelation that was shown to you. I promise you, man, or a woman, if you're a female listening at some point, you're going to be at your destination. Um. Really, man, at some point, you're really going to be there, man. And it's going to be the craziest shit you've ever experienced. It really is. But, yeah, man, we're just graduating, you know, going into the new phase. Going from the 32nd to the 33rd degree, you know. Um, that's why, in, you know, in, in, in the Freemasonic schools, once you get to the 32nd degree, that's the last one. And the 33rd is honorary. And that's really when you get the truth on everything. That either you really were a Luciferian or you got back to the source. You know. So all of us now are at the 33rd degree. We've all graduated. All right. And we all got new wine and new wine skins. So you all stay tuned for the next one. I'm out.